I was born in Sudan. But, um, it's, a, it's a country in Africa, northern Africa. Uh, I was, I was, um, I was living in um, bad, you know, leaving situations. Uh, we, you'd rather stay there to basically die, or you have a choice and get out of country and leave. Melbourne, it was a different world. Oh, oh terrible! I, I didn't know, I didn't quite understand what was they were saying, or don't know, don't know what's going on. I just, I was hiding from people and just talking to my own people, and it was hard picking up English. School got me into um, running, a teacher, competing um, in school cross country and athletics, and doing PE. And I was I was real good, and the teacher got me join, made me join a club in Melbourne, Knox Athletic Club. He paid, did everything for me just to run. And, uh, I didn't like running. I didn't know running was a sport. So I didn't know what else. And um, uh, he encouraged me to, uh, to just have a go at it and see how it goes. And I trained for a few weeks and I started liking it a bit. Uh, it, was, it was pretty difficult. I was like, because I'm getting, trying to understand what the coach was saying was hard then because I didn't know much English. And I, when I went there, I find like much fitter guys than me and it was, it was hard to keep up with and yeah, it, was, uh, it was strange and it was hard, yeah, it was very difficult. I had a lot of good athletes, uh, a lad called Collis Birmingham who I've just been over to the Beijing with, um, Collis made the 5k and because of that you're tending to be down in Melbourne a lot and you meet up with a lot of the other coaches and it happened that one of the coaches down there also had a young lass that she, he was coaching from Mansfield and uh, she was coming to the uni here at Ballarat and uh, he asked me if I'd coach her and from that, that day on we became pretty good friends. And uh, he was saying in a conversation one day that this Sudanese lad called Dua that he used to coach just on a fairly infrequent basis had moved to Ballarat. And so we tried to find Dua and we couldn't find him and one day it happened that we, we saw a photo of him in the paper playing soccer for, for uh, the Forest Rangers. And uh, so by hook or by crook we tracked him down said, would you like to come and have a run? And he did, and the rest is history. Didn't have much impact with Rob, because I, I already I mean, knew the group that I trained with Rob. Kept training, because he's training basically good guys that I know, and they're good runners as well. So I, was, so I, I stick to it, and it, they all encouraged me to stick to it as well. So yeah, they have massive support in me. I've, I'm blessed with a really good training group of girls, guys, um, all ages, from 50 down to 12, um, and they're just all good people. And uh, I think that the fact that we had such a good training group was part of the thing. I didn't have to ask him. I think the, the group made him so welcome. He enjoyed the group's company. They enjoyed his company. It, it was just a natural progression. He showed it almost from the first day. Um, I think it was about a week into training with us. Um, I live at Bunninyung. Dua lives at the other end of town. He lives out at Wendery West, and there's about a 20k difference between the two places. And he missed the bus to get out to training one day, and so he ran out. And from that day on, I thought, yeah, this guy's fair dinkum about wanting to to become an athlete. It was a real um, a fast 3k, and um, I went out there and just gave it everything I got, and um. I ran, ran nine, nine flat, nine minute flat, and I, I didn't, I didn't know how fast I was running. I just, after I finished the race, and I realised I ran nine minute, and then I just, from there, I knew that, I, you know, I could, I could achieve something here. Well, probably some of the challenges locally are. are because Dua's right the other end of town is just making sure that he can get home, get to training. You know, then just dropping him off of an evening. We usually have a little bit of a roster. Some of the athletes will drop him off some nights. I'll drop him off some, some nights. So it's just those little things, that's, but that's, you know, that's easy to look after. But probably on a bigger scale, it's when we start to look at major events. Because Dua's not funded by the VIS or uh, getting any AA funding, say, when we, when we look at, say, going to an interstate meeting, which we're doing later in October, uh, 
it's then trying to get the funding to go there because there's the two of us going up, you're looking at accommodation, you're looking at uh, flights and so on, and it's trying to find that sort of funding. They're the challenges that I as a coach and basically coach slash manager have to look at. I've noticed when a few people talk to Dua, they yell at him because they think he doesn't understand English. <laughs> he speaks better English than most of us do. So I think there's a, there's a language barrier and I think that they I honestly think that some people just think they're from another planet. Well, first, I didn't like me doing running. They reckon I should do soccer because, you know, that's where, they, that's where we, I was born, from my hometown, sport, soccer. And um, since I made the world, the world junior cross country team, uh, now they have massive support and um, encourage and um, help. I know Dua's folks and I've been around there and they're lovely people but um, I'm happy, I coach the athlete and, that, and uh, I know that his parents are fully on board with him and that's all I'm, I'm, I care about really. I think probably reality set in to Dua's dad when I had to go around one night with all the paperwork to, to um, get a, an Australian passport for him. I think then he realised that hey my son's pretty good at this and that he, he's actually going to represent Australia. Well, I think the advice I'd give them is, is treat your athletes as you treat any athlete for a start. There's, you don't have to make any differences, but I think you, if you're going to coach an, any athlete, and it probably counts for, for anybody from any background, that, you've, that there's a support structure there, that if you're going to coach a group of Sudanese athletes and they're from, they live at the other end of town, well, you don't just expect them to come to training and make their own way home. You have to set up a, an infrastructure that can enable them to get to training, that enables them to get home. Uh, that if they start to get to the next level that you start to think about well hey this athlete's pretty good how do I get funding for them how do I get them to the next level because it isn't all going to just fall into your lap you've got to get out there and be a bit proactive. Okay well he, he started, uh, the first race, the major race that we went to was the uh, Victorian All Schools and he won that, um, but it wasn't a very strong field. But he, and he, he, since that he's probably improved probably a minute and a half over 5k. Some of the things that he's won, of, uh, Dua's won the Victorian All Schools 5k title, he's won the Victorian 5k title, uh, these are all at under 20 level. He's won the Victorian Cross, he's run two Victorian Cross Country titles, he was fourth in the um, uh, trial for the World Cross Country and then back to Australia third in the Australian Cross Country title so there's some of his achievements he also won two open races in Ballarat when I wasn't good at running you know I, was, I didn't know running could help me do this and get to I didn't know running can give me a good future or now that I know that running is big in the world I know that it's gonna help me um, the future in my career. At 18, when you think about it and the, the history that Ballarat's got with Steve Monaghetti and others, um, it's a pretty fair achievement to win them at that age. Ch challenging, running best, uh, good runners and you know, challenge, people that challenge you, uh, racing um, yeah, um, and winning.